Hello, dear pupils, and welcome to this video clip for religious education. Um, I am going to show you where you can find um, things you need for studying for the test. Uh, we already made a start with the mind map. And uh, of course, uh, we went really, really slow through all the paragraphs that uh, that you should study for, for this test. Um, but for um, uh, I, want, I want to give to you the answers um, uh, a second time in order for you to study better and um, and also that I am sure that everyone has access to the uh, to the correct answers. And for that I am going to share my screen and I would like to start with its learning uh, because um, when you go to overzicht in the uh, site uh, redref, you'll see uh, the um, uh, yeah all the paragraphs you should study for this test, and also in the um, there are some um, uh, PowerPoint presentations also with correct answers uh, to be found as source as bron uh, with the test. And of course, in the planner, you could find uh, you you will be able to find all the um, uh, PDF files on the matters. Yes, so there you have it. And um, well, all the paragraphs with the date, uh, those are the ones you should study. Yes. Um, well, all that being uh, said, yes, uh, I want to go to uh, paragraph 1.1. I'm go going really, really quickly through the answers. And as said, I guess 1.1 1, 1 uh, of that paragraph, you can find all the answers uh, already on its learning in the a word document, but I will give them again. So I go immediately to, to the knowledge checks. What is the worldwide population of the Jews? And well, it is to be read. Um, where was it? Um, I made some notes in my own book. Oh, of course, here. There are approximately, um, ongeveer, approximately, it derives from the Latin apropinquare, which means naderen, uh, to come nearby. So approximately means um, yeah, bij benadering of ongeveer. Uh, more or less could be a translation. Uh, 15 million Jews worldwide. Question two, where in the world do most Jews live? As you can see from the map on page five, most Jews live in Israel. And uh, when you go to this map, uh, you'll find here um, that Israel counts some, somewhat as uh, five and a half million Jews. Uh, the US also uh, a bit less, uh, but only a little bit less. 5.2, 5.3 uh, million Jews, and all the rest uh, are uh, really, really less than that. Question three, who is the founder of, um, of Judaism? The founder of, uh, it, it is to be, uh, it is said here, the religion goes back 4,000 years and was founded by Abraham. Uh, what makes a person Jewish? A person is Jewish because they are born Jewish. What are the two main types of Judaism? That's said here. Not all Jews are the same. They believe and practice their religion in different ways. The two main types of Jews are orth orthodox and progressive. 
And what is the main difference between the two main, excuse me, what is the difference between the two, the two main Jewish groups? Well, strictly lives and follow their religious rules are closely as possible orthodox, progressive. Uh, they think that religion needs to move with the times. Yes. Paragraph um, 1.1 was that. Paragraph 1.2 then. Um, and for that, I also want to show you that there is a, a PowerPoint presentation in which all the answers are given and also um, well, I guess it's easier to learn this PowerPoint presentation and also the answers to the knowledge check are given there. Uh, so that's one thing I should mention. And the other thing is, well, just this scheme is really important. And when you know this scheme, uh, eventually it means that you know the knowledge check. So the Tanakh, the Tanakh is the Holy Book of Jews. The Tanakh is divided into three parts. Uh, the main sections of the Tanakh are called Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim. Uh, what is the link between the rules given in the Torah uh, and the writings of the Talmud? Um, Orthodox Jews believe God explained to Moses in more detail how to keep the commandments, and this is recorded in the Talmud. And uh, the commandments, well, those are things that you should live by uh, and that we know as laws as well, of course. So that's so the link is given here itself. Uh, and the the uh, and what the Nevi'im and Ketuvim contains, well, it is also set here in these boxes. Um, I do hope that you understand that all this, uh, that all of the knowledge check is only of this paragraph on on this page well the paragraph is even uh, more explaining so the yacht for example it is this uh, uh, a small uh, stick with a hand that is pointing um, and uh, well that um, a word like that you should know it is also in the glossary of course um, but uh, I hope you understand that it is important to also uh, learn um, these kind of things and also how and why Jews use the Torah and the, uh, the things of the Shema and the Shema, it is to be found here in paragraph 1.1 what the Shema is. Yes, so this is the Shema. Um, uh, these are things you should read once or twice. Um, so knowledge check, learn by heart. Um, uh, bold words, learn by heart. Um, and, and there you have it. Also here, bold words are given. So you should learn those. And uh, I guess you learn them in connection. So because of that, um, uh, you will, uh, well, it is good to read this, uh, this page, for example. And in our mind map, we have made a branch that is also explaining the things that are given here. Yes. Paragraph 1.3. I am going really, really quickly, as you can see. Um, uh, what type of relationship do Jews believe that they have with God? Jews believe that they have a personal relationship with God. Where do Jews believe that they can go to escape God's presence? The start of the uh, of the second paragraph of this uh, of this uh, chapter. Jews believe that there is no place they can go to escape the presence of God. Where do Jews go to worship together. Um, 
Jews can and do pray privately and alone, but most Jews will also make time to worship with other Jews in the synagogue. So only the second part of this sentence is the, uh, is the proper answer to the question that is given. Um, um, but, well, to know that Jews can and do pray privately as well um, is good to know. Yeah. Uh, what is the meaning of the word synagogue? Um, and here it is said, the word synagogue means gathering. Uh, gathering, verzameling. Eh? Um, and the word together is also that people ha that they have gathered. Yes, so, so uh, what is Shabbat? Um, Shabbat uh, is the holy day that lasts from sunset on Friday until sunset on Saturday. Yes, and the next paragraph is on Shabbat as well. Um, and here as well, some bold words in uh, in this text. So you should know them. Uh, you should know those as well, and they. Uh, and those words are given in the mind map as well. Good. Paragraph 1.4. How do Jews keep the Shabbat mitzvot? Uh, why do G Jews keep the Shabbat mitzvot? And that was a hard question. But I would say in the Torah, Jews are told to keep one day a week aside as a holy day in the fourth commandment or mitzvah, plural mitzvot, God tells the Jews not to work on the Shabbat. They are to keep this uh, one day holy um, as a day of rest dedicated to God. Um, so the short answer is because, uh, because God uh, 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 well, because they obey God and God gave the rule that they should uh, keep that day holy. Yes, they are told, uh, are to keep. So it is, um, they are obligated to. What does Shabbat gives Jews time for? The Shabbat is kept as a special day to spend with the family and to worship God. So those two things are uh, basically what uh, Shabbat is, uh, how it is celebrated. How many precise jobs does the Torah forbid on Shabbat? The Torah lists uh, 39 jobs that cannot be done once Shabbat begins at Friday sunset. And that's also the answer to question four. When does it begin? Well, and question five then, when does Shabbat ends? Um, Shabbat is then kept until Saturday sunset. Yes. And well, how is it celebrated exactly? So not only what, uh, uh, the, the fact that they should rest, but also what is done at home and in the synagogue, well, that is uh, explained in the boxes. I recommend read those boxes once or twice. Uh, don't learn them by heart, only, of course, the bold words. Yes? Uh, paragraph... Uh, Oh, I do hope that paragraph 1.4 is given there. Paragraph 1.5. Why do G Jews keep kosher? Um, and, well, the knowledge checks are a bit uh, hard, I guess. Uh, what are the food laws in Judaism uh, known as? Well, they, the food laws uh, are known as kosher rules. And then where do uh, Jews get their 
uh, food laws from, from the Torah. The Torah clearly states what Jews should and should not eat. Uh, give one reason why Jews follow the kosher rules. Um, and that is given here. Keeping to the food laws laid down in the Torah is another example of how Jews keep the mitzvot. And as you remember, I do hope that you remember it, uh, the mitzvot, it means the commandments of God uh, that are given in the Torah. Yes, so uh, keeping the Shabbat is one of the mitzvot and uh, also uh, eating in a kosher way is also keeping the mitzvot. Yes, um, and those rules you really should learn. And if I stand correctly, uh, I have a... A paragraph on kosher as well in its learning and well there uh, the uh, answers are given but also in uh, in bullet points in uh, uh, um, uh, not that many words in a few words what are those kosher rules then yes And then, of course, the good share screen and paragraph 1.6. What happens when Jews are born? Um, why are Jewish babies given a Hebrew name as well as another name? It is said here. The Hebrew names help to link generations together as the tradition is continued yes uh, and that it has a specific meaning that hebrew name well that is explained in this paragraph but the answer to uh, the first question is uh, in this paragraph what is the name of the ceremony that boys go through at eight days old well that is given in this small text and this is a, a part of the of the proper uh, of the of the of the main text. So please do not forget. Uh, in order to fulfill the covenant with God, that was uh, that was first made by Abraham. Jewish boys, uh, Jewish boys, are circumcised eight days after their birth. This is known as the Brit Mila, which means the covenant of the cutting. Um, so this, the Brit Mila, is the answer to question two. Why do boys go through this ceremony? In order to fulfill the covenant with God that was first made by Abraham. Uh, how is the birth of a girl celebrated in the synagogue? Well, that is given in this paragraph. On Sabbath after the birth, um, a girl uh, of a girl, the father is usually asked to read from the Torah in the synagogue from the Bima. This is a great honor. The name of the baby girl is usually announced and the rabbi will say a blessing for her. Yeah. And... Uh, uh, question five, I will skip it because uh, the next paragraph is on the matter of bar and bat mitzvah. Yes. What are bar and bat mitzvah ceremonies for? In Judaism, boys and girls have separate ceremonies to mark the age at which they are considered old enough to take on their religious and moral and moral responsibilities for themselves. Um, considered uh, beschouwd, yeah, ze worden beschouwd als, ze worden gezien als, they are seen as old enough to take on their relig religious and moral responsibilities, verantwoordelijkheden. Uh, so think, 
that they uh, uh, they should act and behave in a certain way and that they are responsible to do so. Uh, religious and moral moral has to do with values and act according to those values. Um, question two, before these ceremonies take place, who is responsible for a child's relig religious duties? Up until this time, the parents are expected, expected to make sure that their children perform their religious duties. Why do boys and girls have the ceremony at different ages? Girls are believed to mature earlier than boys, and so they take on religious duties at the age of 12. Um, as boys do so on the age of 13. What is the meaning of the phrase bar and bat mitzvah? Bar mitzvah means son of the commandment, uh, and bat mitzvah means daughter of the commandment. How are the ceremonies in the Orthodox synagogues different from those in progressive synagogues? And that's just basically this text here. Okay, then paragraph 1.8. Um, well, lots and lots of knowledge checks. And well, uh, I can show you the answers. Uh, so question one, it is given in this box, which uh, uh, during which festival, uh, festival do you celebrate a uh, new year? It's here. Rosh Hashanah uh, is the Jewish New Year celebration. Um, then question two. I don't want to scroll uh, all of the time, so I am. I do have my book here as well. So uh, I uh, want to read the question, and I will show you here where you can find the answer. In what way is the festival uh, a time for looking backwards? And that is basically given here. It's a time for fresh starts. Jews will spend 10 days reflecting on what they have done wrong and repenting. Uh, spijt hebben, repenting. At the New Year celebration, what are Jews remembering? The festival celebrates God's creation of the world and the end of the world when the day of judgment will come. What does the sounding of the shofar remind Jews of? Well, and that is given here. During Rosh Hashanah, the shofar is sounded in the synagogue. It has a deep and solemn, plechtig sound, uh, and it reminds Jews that God is almighty and that they must listen to them. Yes? Um, what might be eaten during the festival meal of this celebration? Well, and that is explained here. Uh, usually eat a meal together. They may have apple and honey on table to wish another a sweet year ahead. Uh, the round apples act as a reminder of the uh, cycle of life. Another traditional food at this time is fish. This symbolizes the wish that everyone's goodness will multiply just like the fish in the sea. What does Pesach help the Jews to remember? Pesach is the major Jewish festival. It is also known as Passover. Here it is. Pesach recalls the rescue by God of the Jewish people from slavery in Egypt. Um, what causes the Pharaoh to finally release the Jews? Well, that is given in this uh, uh, small comic. And then this, uh, um, this picture um, uh, specifically. Um, then, uh, what is the name of the most important meal in the celebration? Well, that's given here. It is the Seder meal. 
Yes, the seder meal. Uh, list the symbolic foods in this meal and say what each represent. Um, please see this image and learn it. Yes. And the last question. How is the story of the Jews escape from Evin retold during this meal? Well, and that's given in this text. Um, it's from the Haggadah. Yes. And there are questions uh, asked by the youngest member of the family, of the, uh, the participant of the meal, and the answers tell the story. Okay, then uh, I want to open a new share screen. Yes, uh, again, paragraph uh, uh, of uh, its learning, and I want to show you paragraph uh, so, you, Judaism 2.1, believe on God. The answers are given there and also a small note. Uh, so, I don't want to read the text uh, uh, as a whole, but uh, here you can find the answers, really, trust me. And I also want to show you paragraph uh, this. Um, this uh, PowerPoint presentation, and um, so this, well, please learn it. Also the word covenant, covenant, a really, really, really important word. And we also uh, uh, saw it multiple times during the lessons. Please remember this word, it's a, it's a really important word. Yes, well, this is also important, the descendants of Abraham. And here you have the answers to the knowledge check the answers to the knowledge check of paragraph 2.2. So um, with that, I hope you can study it yourself. Um, as said in the, um, in the things you should learn for the test, also the story of Moses. Well, it is to be found in this PowerPoint presentation as well. Yes. And also uh, the Ten Commandments uh, are given here as well. And then the last paragraph, um, new share, it's learning, share. And I hope you see here Judaism 2.3 knowledge check. So the knowledge check of paragraph 2.3 is also to be found on its learning. Um, good luck with studying. Do you have, when you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below uh, or uh, um, send to me a message with its learning. Thank you and uh, hope to see you uh, soon again. Bye-bye.